All right, so we're moving on our way towards the animation. The last things we need to do is to get the rendering looking a little better before we worry about animating it. Um, right now, we just have one simple light in the scene, uh, and this is what you'd call a key light. It's the one thing directly illuminating the object. Um, in a studio environment, you'd actually light the object with more than one light. So we're going to set that up now. I'm just going to add more plane lights, uh, V-Ray plane lights, and again, just draw them in plan here, then I can rotate them so that they're, they're facing a little bit of a different direction. Um, so the second light would be the, the key light, which is a, kind of a secondary light. We'll move it off to the side. And I can actually assign color to these. Again, so if I go to my modify panel here, uh, I don't want to assign too much color, but if I did kind of a bluish tone to this light, um, I'm going to jump into this my wireframe view here, and instead of front, I'm going to go to perspective, which is going to let me kind of work with with uh, the geometry and see it better. And I'm going to go to shaded. Um, here, if I click my this is my 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 fill light here, and actually I can actually name it up here uh, instead of view light light two, I can just call it fill light. Uh, and I have controls over how bright it is. So if I increase this to 90. Um, I think if I go to realistic, there's a chance I'll actually see the light. Um, still no. Um, I think 90 is going to be way too much. We were at 30, so I'm going to set this to 45, because I'm going to back it off. I don't want it super close to the object. You can see that I am getting some shadow. Uh, and the last thing I want to do is to set a background light. Uh, so again, create my Create tab, and then my Light tab. I'm making sure I'm on V-Ray, my V-Ray light here. Um, and I'll just make a long, skinny light. I'll turn it up so it's facing the background and rotate it in. And this one's really, its job is just to make sure that the background uh, has a nice color to it. Uh, we still want the shadows um, from our, our our key light, and we want a little bit of reflection from our fill light, um, but our background light is going to be a little bit weaker. So just like before, I want to make sure that this light here, we can name it background light, uh, I want to make sure it's invisible, which it still is, and I'm going to set its color to something a little warmer, so kind of this yellow color, and I'll drop it down to maybe 15. Uh, so now we need to preview what that looks like, and just like before, I could go ahead and render, um, but I was telling you about this plugin called Solid Rocks. Uh, Solid Rocks takes just a second to set up, and I think it saves a, an amazing amount of time on, on rendering uh, either just draft renderings um, and even production renderings and especially animations. So here's my little uh, solid rocks launcher and it brings up this dialog box and I have a, you know very limited controls of what I want here which is you know let's t let's just take a look and compare. Uh, here uh, we have all of the V-Ray settings uh, which we have lots and lots and lots of. Uh, then we have indirect illumination settings, we have additional settings, uh, we have render elements, and we have common. Um, all of that is simplified into this panel. Uh, so what I'm going to do is just say that I want uh, kind of a HD TV 16 by 9 uh, ratio, and I'm making sure that by middle clicking here in this frame that this is the camera that's selected. This SF is my safe frame, so this is actually what the camera will render. You can see it just bump things in. It shows me what I'm really looking at. And again, I'm going to recenter my clock. Uh, I'm going to zoom in a little bit on it. Uh, and then I can set my size, which right now 360 by 640 is awfully small, so I'm going to lock that aspect ratio, and I can drag this slider up something larger. Here I have several different ways to do the rendering. Uh, the default is fine, and we're in an interior environment, so I'm not worried about you know a factor of the sun. So that's fine. I can then just find you know if I want a low quality or fast draft or like super high end rendering. Medium is working fine for me. And all I have to do is click this mini preview button, and Solid Rocks goes through and just does a quick test look. Uh, and it's it's awfully dark. I don't get to see a whole lot of what's going on. But if I click this uh, AE, which is an automatic exposure, it runs through its own permutations of different settings and different lights and setting the shutter speed of the camera so that we, we see the, the object much better. So you can see between the two, this one's clearly better. And we're dropping from a shutter speed of, of 200 to a shutter speed of 80. 
Uh, and then we can also do a white balance. So I click auto white balance and again it runs through a couple permutations and you can see uh, we're moving from kind of this grayish color to something a little more natural, which I like. So I'm going to apply that. Um, the last thing is I'm still not seeing enough of the clock. So I'm back in top. I'm going to just click and drag and get all of the clock there and see if I can rotate it around a little bit more. Uh, there, I like that better. So again, middle clicking back in, and then I can just click render. And Solid Rocks has done everything for me, and you can see it's doing a light cache pass right now. Uh, and we can we can now finally see the glass. Uh, and just in a matter of a few seconds, it's doing all the, the image cache or the irritants map, uh, and now we're actually rendering, which might take a little bit of time. So I'm going to let this run, and uh, we'll see what comes out on the other side. All right, and it's finished up. Uh, you can see the rendering is pretty decent. Um, there's some things I don't really like about it, but there are some things that I really love. Uh, the glass looks great. I, I like this kind of orange edge that we're seeing from the gold. Uh, really kind of maybe 
spending more time with the materials, getting them set up, or, or finding ones that I like better might be the best use of my time here. I also like that we get to see that blue light and the white light here. Uh, we get to see some of the reflections in the bells, which look fantastic. Uh, overall, this one cylinder, the body of the clock, I think it looks a little funny because I've pulled off this ring, uh, so it's like, you know, impossibly thin. And I could go on and, and, and tweak some of these things, um, but really I want to get towards the animation. Uh, so you could see that that took about, I don't know, five, six minutes to, to render. Actually, I think I can pull up my information here. Uh, and I, I can figure that out. But uh, I'm going to show you one last thing in the next step um, on how to set up a kind of a ink and paint material, which is something a little uh, much simpler to render. Uh, it, has, it doesn't have the detail of these materials, but it's something that will increase the production time. And then we'll get into keyframing and actually animating the clock. So that's coming up next.